So today, let's build a cell phone controlled switch so I can remotely control an aircraft preheater. That way I can sleep in a little longer and then go have breakfast. So just think of all the time savings. While my plane is warming up, I can be enjoying my coffee. I can be eating my cereal. Or I can save even more time by having my coffee with my cereal. So today's episode is all about wiring up a cellular switch to control an aircraft preheater. So we're at the Planes with Perry headquarters. Now if you can see in the video, you can see the smear on the glass. I thought I would be smart. Uh, we had a bird not long ago. It flew into the glass and made a little smear. So I thought in preparation for this video, I would clean the outside of the window so that there wouldn't be this smear. And the Windex froze all over the window. So that smear is all frozen Windex because it's so cold outside. It's minus 23 degrees Celsius right now, which is why I'm doing an inside video today. So when I was shopping around for which cellular switch module to buy, there's just so many options out there. Some of them are catered specifically as aviation preheater controls. And when I got to looking at reviews, there was one that was up for sale for around $600 Canadian. And when you look at reviews, turns out it's basically a $200 module that somebody crudely solders in a jumper wire inside to try to up the amperage capability of the unit. And then they slap an airplane sticker on the outside, call it aviation specific, and charge $600 for it. There was another one I was looking at that was cell phone controlled through an app. Looked like it was really slick. You could either control two channels or four channels pretty effortlessly with this app. But when I looked into buying it, there was only one Canadian supplier and I got ghosted for a couple weeks. And I thought if it's that hard to pay somebody, it's probably even harder to get any kind of warranty or after sales support. So I decided to go this route instead. Now I'm going to be controlling two of these 900 watt space heaters as well as a oil pan heater that's on the aircraft and controlling a battery minder on the plane. And you might think that's kind of not doable uh, off of one 15 amp circuit in the hangar, but here's how I'm going to break it down. So when no channels are activated, I'm going to be powering up a battery minder that keeps the aircraft battery topped up and desulfated. This battery minder will run continuously until I activate channel one. Channel one is going to turn off the battery minder. It will then turn on my oil pan heater that's on the bottom of my aircraft engine, as shown in an earlier video. It will also power a 900 watt space heater that's going to be inside the cowl of the aircraft. When I activate channel two, it will turn off all devices on channel one, but will allow my battery minder to then turn back on and will control one 900 watt space heater that will be inside the cockpit of the aircraft. When channel one and channel two are turned off, the battery minder will then resume its operation. Now the main breakdown of components, I've got the oil pan heater that's already installed on the aircraft. I've got these two 900 watt space heaters made from Temro, also branded as Zero Start. So these are made for interior car warmers. So they're made uh, not to burn up seats, that type of stuff. So they work really good for in the cowl of an aircraft. There are a lot of aircraft owners that use these. Now there is some bulletins about not keeping these permanently in an aircraft. And I will be basically using them temporarily to heat up the cowl. Before flight, I'll then be removing them. So these won't be a permanent installation. They'll basically be uh, hung up inside the cowl to keep the engine warm. And I'm going to be making an angled bracket to mount one in the cockpit. I've also got my cellular switch. I've got wiring. I've got these IoT relays. They're made by Digital Loggers Inc. out of the United States. And I've got a SIM card. So this wireless SIM card was one I bought from 7-Eleven. I've already activated it to this device, but this SIM card purchased through 7-Eleven. Based on my math, I'll be able to run this unit for around $20 a year. So that's ideal. I've got an AC to DC power adapter. This is actually one that is from an old router that I don't use anymore. I'm going to be cutting off the ends and using the two wires to power the cell phone switch. If you don't have one of these, you'll have to buy one because this unit comes blank with no, no wiring. So it'll have to be fully wired with a power adapter. So here's the unboxing of the cellular switch. These two cables are programming interfaces so that you can program the unit through the use of a computer. Here's a remote antenna. So this unit has an internal antenna already installed. 
but if installed in a metal building, kind of like an aircraft hangar, you might run into an issue where the building acts like a Faraday cage and can block the signal of the internal antenna. So it comes with this remote antenna that you can install on the outside of a building or structure. This unit comes with an auxiliary battery that can be plugged in inside the unit, and I'll show you where that plugs in. This is a pretty slick setup. So if there's a power outage to this unit, so let's say power to the building is shut down, it will then run off this backup battery and you can program it so it'll notify you to your cell phone if there's a power outage. Here's a quick start guide showing some of the programming options to get you going as well as the pinout of the device itself. And here's a unit. So I've already removed the screws so that I can open this up and show you. Here's the internal antenna that you can unscrew and wire in the remote antenna. I've got this blue tape over top that's just to block the IMEI number so it's not visible in the camera footage. This is what I used to program the, the SIM card specifically to my unit. Here is the SIM card holder. So that's where you'll put your SIM card in. Now this unit has seven relays so I can control up to seven channels with this. These uh, screw jacks are where you'll wire up the relays or your power in and out. So power in and out is up here. It'll run either on DC or AC voltage. Now my plan is to run this on low power DC. The reason for that, I can treat this basically like a low power switching unit to increase its longevity. Some of the other boxes available out there, you can run you know, up to 12 amps directly through the unit. I don't wanna do that. Instead, I'll run my 12 amps through these other power bars. I'll keep this as low power DC switching to control a high power power bar. These other screw jacks are for the rest of the relays. So now one of the relays is cell phone controlled in the way that you can either call it or text it. The other six relays are merely for text messages only. So if you get a good data plan that's free text messages, you'll be able to text message this thing all day long and it won't affect your data plan. So now I'll show you the unboxing of this control relay. So this unit runs off your typical three prong power outlet cable. Now the reason why I chose this unit is that it's switchable from input based off of the cellular switch. So now two of these ports are normally off, meaning that power is not supplied to these outlets unless directed to do so by the input. So once it receives an input from the cellular switch, it will then supply power to these two outlets. This outlet is normally on, meaning a device normally receives power until it gets a switch input, at which point it'll turn this unit off, this port off. Now this port is always on, meaning it always has power to it, regardless of what whether there's an input or no input. So now I'll prep this AC adapter. Now I'm not sure which one will be the positive signal and which one will be the negative signal. So what I'm going to have to do is hook up a multimeter and plug this AC adapter into the wall to determine which one's positive and negative so that I can properly wire it in. Right now I'm guessing that the one with the white stripe will be the positive. So I've got the AC adapter plugged into the wall outlet behind me. I have the wire with the white stripe hooked up to the positive lead of my multimeter, the plain black wire hooked up to the negative of my multimeter, and I can see that the polarity is correct, meaning that I did guess right. The one with the white stripe is a positive wire. I've got an output voltage of 12.6 volts, which is more than what I need for this project. This AC adapter supplies up to one and a half amps, which reading the manufacturer specs of my cellular switch, looks like it actually draws only around half an amp. So I've got more than adequate power supply while not draining too much power off of my 15 amp circuit to run this cellular switch. So get to go on the next step. So looking at the manual for how they want it wired up, looks like they want it wired up on the hot side. So hot side switched rather than a ground side switched. So if you have something ground side switched, you've got that much longer lengths of wire that will be sitting there with a the voltage potential and susceptible for short to ground. So the relay doesn't really know the difference between hot side or ground side switched in an application like this. So that's how I'm going to wire it just like in the manual. So I ran into a bit of a problem. I removed the circuit board just from the case just so I can access the pin terminals better and wire it up. I was able to then inspect the backside for the soldering. I found all the connections were good, but the wiring I had earmarked for this project 
a little bit too thick of a gauge to be able to fit into the terminals. So what I'm going to do is sacrifice some test leads that I'd made previously years ago in my automotive career. I'm going to use the wiring from that. It's a little bit thinner, but still adequate given the amperage load I'm working with. Okay, I've got the unit ready to put back together. Now I'm just going to explain the wiring. First off though, the power feed from your wall adapter, make sure you run it through this weatherproof connector first, otherwise you won't be able to fit this collar on afterwards. So I've got the negative feeding into the first pin, the negative also branches off into two other wires, now that will go out to my power bars, so I'll basically have a positive and negative pair for each power bar. So the negatives all feed into one pin and the positives feed off of the second pin. So I've got the first positive loops around to feed the first relay. From there, it will go out to the load, which is the power bar. The second power feed goes into the next relay over and from there goes out to the power bar. So it looks more confusing than what it actually is. It's quite simple, but just given the limited amount of space you have to work with, I recommend actually taking the circuit board out and wiring it up because it will be next to impossible to try and feed it into this small space here. Uh, the remote antenna, I've got the internal antenna removed and the remote cable I've got that feeding through the first weatherproof connector and it'll be ready to connect to the rest of the antenna upon installation. So now I'm ready to put it all back together. I've got the new SIM card installed and once it's installed I'll get this auxiliary battery plugged in right here into the circuit board and I can button it up. Okay, I'm in the garage now. My plan is to mount everything onto this piece of plywood which will then be mounted onto the wall in the hanger. That way I can get it all set up and ready to go at home test it and then just it's a matter of simply screwing onto the wall. So here's how I'm going to mount it. I'm going to mount my two power bars here and I'm going to mount my control box right here. The reason for that is so that I have room for expansion should I decide to add a third power bar and run everything else on a third channel. I may be adding solar power at some point so I might need some kind of solar power control that will probably go here. <laughs> The connector that goes into the side of these power relays are just a simple push style connector that also uses screw posts for the top here. So your input wires just push into these connectors, you screw down the posts and they're ready to just plug into the unit. So I've got everything plugged in and ready to program. Now you might have been wondering what I did with the drilling here. The reason for that is these power relays only have mounting tabs on the top uh, where I've screwed it to the wood. My worry is that if somebody grabs a cord and unplugs it that it might twist this unit and break the tabs. So what I've done is I've drilled holes on either side of this cable and also zip tied down here. So now the unit's secure. So the cellular relay comes with a set of programming instructions. Part of it is putting the unit into a learning mode and sending a text message or phone call to that unit so that it learns your number and that way it can ignore all the other numbers. So that's what I'm going to go ahead and do right now. Okay, so I've got everything set up. I've got the unit programmed. I've got my phone plugged into this power bar here. I'm going to call this unit and we should see that the status changes and I should be able to see on my phone screen as well that the power bar now charges my cell phone. So it's making the call. And there we go, the unit now switches and I can see on my phone that it's now charging. 
And the unit disconnects a phone call right away, so it doesn't actually count as a phone call on your data plan. And there we go, now the unit's off. Now I'm going to text message it and test that the text message works. And there we go, it turns on. Now my phone is charging and now the unit replies that the output is now working okay. So if I call this number, it doesn't give me that feedback text message back. So I think I'm going to text the unit only uh, because then it actually lets you know that it replies and that the unit is on. Now I've texted that the unit turns off and now it's off. And the unit should reply, now it's off, okay. Now I'll test the same for output number two, channel number two. And it's on. My phone is now charging and it replies that it's on okay. Now I'm going to message it to turn off. And the unit's off. And I get a reply that it's off okay. So now we're ready to take it out to the hanger and install it permanently. So right now I've got everything connected. Uh, the battery reminder is running because it's plugged into the normally on spot. Now I'm going to text message the plane and we should see it switch. So you'll see a green light will come on here. There we go. Now what happened is it uh, turned off the battery reminder. I now have the space heater in the cowl. It's now blowing hot air. And if I reach underneath onto the oil pan, I've got heat going to the element, just as planned. Now I'm going to text message the plane to turn off that channel, and we should see the light go out. Which it did. Now I can hear that my space heater turned off, uh, which also would have turned off the oil pan heater. Now I will send a text message to the next channel, which should turn on the battery reminder and turn on the space heater that's in the cockpit. We should see this light switch on on this next box, which it did, and I got a reply that it turned on okay. So I've made a platform to hold the heater up off of the seats, and the cable just runs through this uh, port window on my side window here. This is the flap that flips down, and if I reach in, I can feel the heat is now coming from that heater. So there you have it. Everything's function tested good. Now it's time to put it to the big test. So I'll wait till a day where I'm ready to fly and the plane's ready to fly and we'll test the system. Well, let's see how this engine heat works. So taking a reading on the surface of the wing, I've got almost minus eight degrees Celsius. Now taking a reading on the engine, I've got plus 27 degrees, 26.6. Reading on the oil filter, plus 32 degrees Celsius. Oil cooler is 26. Rocker cover, we got 17 degrees Celsius. So this engine's adequately heated. If I put my hand on this crankcase of the engine, I can feel that the heat is soaked through the metal. Uh, we're good to start this aircraft up. I'm going to leave the insulated blanket over top of the cowl while I switch to cabin heat and I'll pre-flight the aircraft and we'll see what the cabin heat reaches. Okay, I've had the cabin heater running for approximately 25 minutes and we'll see what the panel's at. 17 degrees Celsius. So that's with the surface of the wing being at around minus seven. The interior is now almost room temperature. And that's only with 25 minutes of preheat with this little buddy set up. So pull all this out and I'll be ready to fly.
Well, hopefully you've enjoyed this video. Hopefully you aircraft owners out there now have an idea on another type of aircraft preheater system that might work for you. For those of you that are looking to use a cellular switch to control some other piece of equipment remotely, this system would likely fit the bill for you as well. Now I'm off to do a post maintenance test flight. I've been dealing with a nose wheel shimmy on this Piper Tomahawk. I've now got a new nose tire, inner tube and wheel bearings and I'm going to go off and test to make sure that it's corrected that shimmy. So please like this video, please subscribe, you'll be notified on when that next test flight video comes out. That's it for now. Thanks for watching. See you on the next one.